Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, a bit more machining for you on one of our Cosworth blocks, the mini van that you guys may have seen in our previous video sitting in the workshop. We're going to tell you a little bit why we've got that and just a little bit into the amount of engines we've got coming in at the minute. So yeah, hope you enjoy. All right guys. So we've got a 200 block Cosworth here. Sorry about leaving the tap wrench on the, on the surface there, gotta face it anyway. So this one's in um, for Mr. Pritchard. So we've got to put top hat liners in this and we've got to do the 10 studs. It's already got the six studs, but the trouble is with the studs that it had in it, um, they were the, the short type with the built-in or the machined in 17 mil o-ring sort of washer in the middle of the stud so they sort of that washer goes down into this 17 mil groove here with an o-ring on it and that's what does the sealing the only trouble is with those is they can only go obviously as deep as that washer will go because it's machined into the stud so the problem you get is on this back two here and this is the opposite end to the oil gallery if you can see down there i'm going to see if you can see down there see down the base of the block it's a little bit blurry but you've got a, a stud machines into like a lug in the casting down the base and the same the same on that one but well, the problem is with those studs that I was talking about, that people used to fit, or some people would still fit, is it just doesn't go deep enough. It basically just locates in the lug, in the casting of the block. And the problem we've had in the past, or people have had in the past, is it breaks that lug off. Um, so what we do now is we get our studs from Julian Godfrey. And these are the studs. So they come without that machined in o-ring groove so basically we can go another five mil deeper on those those two there and also on these end two when you do a 10 stud conversion and what it comes with is a 17 mil separate o-ring that just slides over there and locates in that groove so you can just go as deep as you want with these um, so they're the studs that we use now and the studs that Dave uses so what we're doing with this we're going five mil deeper because it's had the 10 studs already we're just going to go five mil deeper on these ones and we're going to put the the n4 in now if you can see down here i've done this one already what we normally do is we go five mil deeper again you can see that lug now in the casting so that's what it looks like and you you have it on these two um, so what we do is we machine down 5 mil through the through the casting and then we go 5 mil deeper again on the thread so the thread sits sits right down in the base of the block makes it nice and strong and if, I wind, if I wind this stud in as far down as it will go you can see now you can see that stud sits lovely and flush and that blue o-ring will just sit straight over there push nicely into that groove and seal it a treat and um, so the reason for doing this 10 long stud conversion is the problem you've got is on high boost applications with these blocks as in most of them are tuned to high heaven and um, what happens when the block the original head bolts bolt at the surface of the block here and what happens is over time because of the boost etc it pulls up on the block surface and you either get cracks along here um, or it blows the head gasket or both um, so what we do is we eliminate the stress on the surface of the block by machining down and putting a thread in the base of the block down here to, to eliminate any stresses here so the head torques and the head is pulling down on the base of the block through a long stud and that's why we do this conversion so this is what we're doing now as you can see i've done these three end ones and i'm just doing 
the last one here. Now, another problem with doing these N4, and a few years ago, before I started doing these long stud conversions on the Cosworth, I've had blocks in in the past where, particularly the end studs, when they're in, they're sort of a bit on the piss, like this. And people have had to bend them over to get the head on. Absolute butchery. Um, and I always wondered why that was, why some people couldn't get it right. And until I sort of had a look into doing it and I ordered the tool in, the reason is, is if you have a look down here, can you see that? You see that shiny, I do apologize about my camera. Can you see that shiny area on the side of the block? Now what that is, is when you drill down in the existing stud hole, there's a casting that just sort of overlaps going down this side. And if you don't send an end mill down like that, very carefully to machine the side of the block before you put the drill in, the drill can wander off the side of that casting and drill down a bit on the piss, as they say. So my feeling is whoever was doing it is missing this process obviously to speed things up because it is a bit of a slow process doing these studs they've missed this process or haven't been so careful and when they've done the drilling and the tapping the stud ends up on the piss so that was one of the reasons i did actually send a block to a company and it come back with exactly that problem um so i bought the tool in decided to start doing it myself and here we go i have tons of them now um, so that is a very important process on these N4. We've got another block for Dave to do, um, which has got none of the six in the middle, so I've got to do all ten long stud conversions. And then once the BMW, once the last BMW is finished on the boring bar, we've got to put ductile iron top hat liners in both of these blocks. So plenty of work from Dave at the minute. And of course Dave being Dave, he's um, pushing me on nicely and wants to try and get it back for the weekend. <laughs> Thanks Dave. Well, really strange how things go. Bear in mind, we'd just come back after Christmas and we'd sort of caught up a bit just before Christmas. So it was just sort of easing back into it. But two weeks in and the work is piling in. Now, I don't know whether it's anything to do with the, the channel. Um, we seem to be getting a lot of phone calls and queries from viewers of the channel, which we're really appreciative of. And um, yeah, can't thank you guys enough for watching and you know commenting and getting in touch with us. Even if it's for advice, we don't mind at all. You know, we're here to help. Um, but yeah, it just seems really strange. You know, it all right. It does usually pick up just after Christmas, but nothing like this. I mean, we've got so much work coming in. But Cosworths alone, we've got. So we've had this Cosworth under this sheet, the one that we built up from nothing. That's been an ongoing project. So we've got that one. We've got Dave Pritchard's one that I showed you earlier um, on the long study. And we've got that one over there. We've got another one of Dave's down there. That's three. We've got these two here. So this is for another customer of ours, which we've got to do a dummy build on. And um, we've done some machining on that. We've got this one over here, this is for our friends at Auto Dynamics, which we've got to build the short motor. Um, so we've got that one there. So what we've got there, one, two, three, four, five. We have, we've had a, now yesterday was really odd. I had a message in the morning from two brothers and they said that their engines, I'd spoke to them before Christmas and their Cosworth engines are on pallets ready to be delivered. They'll be here tomorrow, which is obviously today. So that's one that's turned up. We've got another one here off the other brother that's, that's turned up. Um, 
my next video, I'll tell you about this one. That's a, another story there. Um, so that's seven. And then I had a phone call from a chap literally about an hour after I got the message from these guys um, saying he rang up saying that he was I spoke to him also before Christmas, which I do remember now. Um, he got a quote for doing a Cosworth engine on a small turbo Escort, so with a later Escort. Um, just got a, I give him the quote, he just had to go back to the customer. Got back yesterday, he's gonna be delivering that on Saturday. Um, and then I got another phone call later on in the day from a chap. He's got a ferry coming over on the 1st of Feb, so next Tuesday, and he's going to be delivering his Cosworth engine to be done, and also his brother-in-law, I think it was, his Mitsubishi Evo engine. Um, so that's another two engines coming down there. So that'll be the ninth Cosy then, I suppose. Today, I've had another phone call for an Evo, for a quote on an Evo engine, and also a quote on a Subaru Impreza engine. So... Yeah, as I say, really strange how it goes. We sort of have a spate of doing the classic stuff and then a spate of the performance stuff, the two litre turbo stuff now and again, just goes nuts, but nothing like this, this is mental. Um, so yeah, not complaining whatsoever, really happy. Um, if it is you you guys that subscribe or watch the channel, then just keep them coming guys, we'll, um, we're here to help. So the little minivan, uh, we built the engine on this. Uh, so we built the engine, had the gearbox done by our friend Bob Tucker and we put the clutch on it. The guys took it away and fitted it to the car himself. Now, I think the problem he had was he, the, the customers took it away, done about 80 miles in it and gradually sort of, it was harder and harder to get into gear when he was stationary. So we've picked, got it picked up brought it back to have a look he's put a new master clutch master cylinder on it um, not a new slave cylinder we basically bled the system and Bob took it for a little test drive yesterday he said it was absolutely perfect so that was all it was really but <laughs> we've come to fire it up this morning I fired it up I drove it round the block and it was a little bit uneasy to get into first gear um, but once you were driving it seemed to be okay but then when I got back, left it running, put it into neutral, went to go to first, no chance. Uh, you put it in reverse and it just stalls instantly. So we've checked the adjustment down on the bottom of the clutch there. And it does appear that we've got some sort of leak in the system. So assuming that that new master cylinder is okay, Bob's gonna come around tomorrow, have a look at it and maybe replace the slave cylinder and hopefully that cures that little problem. But apart from that, the engine sounds sweet as a nut. If I just fire it up so you can listen to it, all seems. Probably on camera, you can hear the ticking away, but if any of you know minis or little A-series engines, then that's what they sound like. But this is particularly quiet. Sounds absolutely sweet as a nut. So, Hopefully, replace that slave cylinder and bleed it up again and it should be all right. So there we go, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching yet again. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until another one, please subscribe, hit the notification bell and uh, take care. Cheers, guys.